Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this episode I decided to make a small porch for the door of my workshop. So the first thing to do was to break up a few pallets. And uh, the idea was to use the skids, those thick pieces, um, as the, uh, the main body of the frame of the porch. I did have a few of these um, already from other pallets that I've broken up these skids so I kind of I tried to choose the best ones or the lightest ones but the most sort of dense as well so str strongest and lightest so now I'm just um, neatening up the curly edges cutting off those rough edges with the table saw And now I'm just going to mark up um, the lengths. So I've already had a look at the opening of the door and I've decided on the, uh, the top piece and the, the back piece and they're, they're slightly different lengths. The back piece that runs down along the door is slightly longer than the top and I'm now just going to cut those to size. So this one piece of pallet skid is going to form four lengths of wood when I'm finished with it. So now I'm just setting up the, uh, the table saw and what I try to achieve is I try to get the wood like a square so the width and the height the same and um, I had enough on this piece to get two out of it so I wanted it as square as possible just to make sure that it's nice and strong when it all goes together. I'm not sure what kind of wood this was. If you can identify it, please let me know. But I don't think it was pine. So now I'm cutting down the middle where I've made my cut of my line. And that gives me um, the two sides, top and back. And now I just want to, I've got a scrap piece of wood here and I want to work out what kind of pitch I want for the roof. So there I've cut um, a 15 degree angle in that piece of wood and I'm just checking it against one of my pieces and uh, it seems fine. So I decide to go with that 15 degree pitch. So now I'm going to cut my back section a uh, 15 degree cut there. And now as you can see the top sort of doesn't line up straight with the back so I'm going to cut a 15 degree along the, that as well and then when I turn that over it should line up nicely. There we go. So that will now sit flush um, on the frame. And I've done the same for both. So I've got two nicely matching brackets here. So I need to create a support for the middles. And that's the next thing to do. But first I'm just going to make some pilot holes in the tops. And I'm going to connect those together so they're nice and sturdy. And I'm just using a bigger drill, piece, a drill bit here to uh, countersink I've already uh, glued that piece Now I'm just drilling down through the bottom and These are fairly long screws And that worked out quite well. So 
So uh, for the, um, the bottom of the bracket, I decided to give it a, an edge. So I've decided on a 45 degree cut, just to meet me up with the bottom. And I made that cut on both. So the next thing to do is to uh, cut the wood to make the, uh, the support pieces. I used the same thickness again so that it matched the rest of the wood. And now I'm just working out where I want my angle to go. I'm just doing that by eye just so that it looks right to me. And then I'm marking the piece of wood so that I can make my cuts. And there it is. So that when that's all together, that should be a really strong bracket. And now I'm just marking up where I want the screws to go to attach this bracket. And I screw from the back so that the screws aren't visible when um, when the porch is on the uh, workshop. You shouldn't be able to see those screws. And to attach these, I just use some uh, some drywall screws. One because they they go they counter sink kind of themselves into the wood. But number two, that I'm never probably never going to take those out again. So uh, they're really just to to hold it steady so that the glue dries. So they should do the job just fine. So what I do is now, on the second bracket, I clamped it to the first bracket, so that when I put the um, piece of wood on, so that I could match it up perfectly with the first one. As you can see, they're clamped together, so I can line up that and that support brace perfectly with the one below it, so that I get two kind of identical brackets, and there they are. So that's the main part of the build complete. Now it's time to um, to make the. Uh, well, I'm going to use two pieces of wood, which will connect these two brackets together and span across the porch. So again, I've used the same width on the table saw, so that all the wood is the same width and depth. first piece and I at this point there's no screws holding it in it's it fits perfectly um, I'll just hit it in with a mallet and now that I know that's a perfect fit I just took those pieces out and I cut the second piece in line with the first piece to make sure it's exactly the same and now I'm just going to put these pieces together again gluing and screwing And as this porch was only small and it was only holding a really, it's only going to hold a really small light roof, it didn't need to be, this part of the building didn't need to be super strong. All the strength comes from the brackets. So this was really just to connect it all together. So that part is glued and connected with a couple of screws. Now it was just time for um, a sanding down, so I've used quite a rough grit there, I think probably 80 grit, and then I'll go down to a, a finer sandpaper. But I didn't spend too much time on sanding this because it is outdoors and it is for a workshop. It didn't really require too much sanding. 
and as you can see there are there are nail holes in some parts of this wood um, I could have filled those but as I was going to stain it with quite a dark grey I thought it probably, it probably won't be noticeable so um, I didn't bother um, now I'm just making some pilot holes ready for attaching it to the frame so the way I've designed this it's going to be attached directly to the frame of the double glazed door and um, it fits tightly in there between the frame and the, the shed itself so even without any screws it's already a tight fit um, and when I added the screws later it was really strong so you'll see that later but now I'm just painting it with some fence stain the same stain that I used to build uh, on, on the workshop so um, it will match um, I ended up putting four coats on and I think I went a bit too far because it turned out to be slightly darker than the shed but that's not a problem it will protect it nicely as I say if you know what kind of wood this is that I'm using please let me know because I had no idea it's quite a dense wood but it didn't have a very strong grain so now I've got a mallet and I'm just offering up the porch frame to the shed and I'm just knocking it in as you can see there's no screws holding it in there it's really tight so I'm just getting it all lined up this helps because if you're on your own and you want to put it up I don't need a second pair of hands to sort of hold it in place while I screw it so it's real tight there and now I can just screw it in so I drill some pilot holes into the frame um, even I, I was planning on bolting it to the frame because I thought it wouldn't be strong enough but I've used really thick screws and I tested it beforehand and they're actually really strong it gave me a very strong um, lot of security to the frame so I used six screws in total As you can see, it's all square to the frame, nice and tight. Now just putting the last two screws in at the top of the, um, the brackets. So now I'm going to use, um, I've got a piece of leftover, it's aluminium composite material, which um, I've used for making signs in the past, so I didn't need this scrap piece. So I've just worked out the width that I want, and I'm just going to chop it. Uh, this is called a shear brake roller, and it, it's just for chopping metal, metal sheets like this. So uh, where I've drawn that line, I just chop it, and that is the width of my uh, my roof. It happens to have a white coating on it, which matches the door, so I left that. I thought that was fine. So now I'm just cutting the corners, rounding off those corners. And they are the corners that are going to be facing outward. The ones that are parallel to the, uh, the shed itself, I haven't bothered to round those off. Now I'm just taking off that cover, which is uh, nice and satisfying to see that brand new surface underneath. And I'm going to use that part on the underside of the porch so that when you look up, you can see a nice brand new surface. The, um, the side that's been exposed will be the roof side. I'm just giving it a clean because it's been in storage for a while. And uh, to attach it, the frame, I'm using some uh, self-tapping screws and uh, plastic caps. And that's all I had. 
on me at the time. Um, I just happened to have some white caps that matched the roof. Ideally, I'd probably use tech screws with a, a rubber washer to seal, but I've used these. I'm going to see how these go. Um, I've got a quite a nice tight seal because the surface of the roof is, is flat, so it's, it's quite a good seal, so they'll probably be fine. But in the future, um, if I do find that they, they let water in, I'll just change them for some tech screws. So it's a bit awkward at this point, uh, just drilling a little pilot hole in the material to screw the screw into. I suppose you could maybe use a grab adhesive for this, but in a, in a strong wind, I wanted to be sure that it wouldn't come off. So there you can see how easily it drills. Um, it's like a sandwich layer of aluminium and plastic. And there it is all finished. So I was really pleased with how it came out. Uh, and it really matches the shed nicely. Really easy to build. It cost me practically nothing. I used uh, all scrap materials. But um, towards the back of it, I couldn't really screw screws down because the, um, the overhang of the shed was in the way. So I decided to get a piece of beading uh, and attach it just to make it all nice and tight and secure. So I drill a few pilot holes, just a few thin screws to hold it to the shed frame and it is just to hold it down so that it doesn't flap about in the wind. Just using a bigger drill bit there to count in the holes. I may paint this at a later date, I may paint it grey to match the shed, but it does match the, the white of the roof, so I'm not sure what to do. And I might add a bit of silicon as well along there, but because of the overhang in the roof, it doesn't really matter. And there you, you can see it's finished, and that is really nice and tight and secure. Perfectly watertight. So, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and please also consider subscribing as well for more videos. And I'll see you next time.